Despite it being the largest ledge on the route, I didn't get much sleep. I couldn't stop thinking about the 1,000 feet of air below us and the 2,000 feet above. Good morning from El Cap Tower. We are packing up and getting ready to head up. Chris is going to leave the Texas flank. Following up the Texas flank that Chris just led. We had some pullback shenanigans. So here I am jugging with the poop canister. Our haul bag seems to be magnetically attracted to tiny overhangs. It's caught again. Okay, go ahead and haul. Thank you. Okay, clear. We reach the top of the boot flake on our face with a blank expanse of granite. To get across, Chris lowers down and sprints across the wall, diving for holds. This outrageous maneuver is called the King Swing. <laughs> Whoa! Oh shit, you right? Chris makes it across the king swing, but it's this next lower out where all our careful planning starts to come undone. It's actually not that much rope. I think I should have done the untie retie. We hit our first major snag. Our lower outline is tangled, requiring over an hour and a reverse king swing to undo it. I tried to pull lower out. This thing got caught. I had to do a crazy shenanigan to get it back. Climbing. Thank you. 
Already behind schedule, we run into our next issue, a train of four slow parties that we get stuck behind. On a route as famous as the nose, it's sometimes unavoidable. After being backed up for several hours, Camp 5 is simply out of our reach today. We need to divert to Camp 4. We brought an extra day's worth of food and water, but at this pace, and only halfway up the wall, the summit is uncertain. Camp 4 is small, sloping, and uncomfortable. Our entire plan was built around avoiding it. But here we are. I spent some extra time to make myself a mini cocoon out of the hammock in our haul bag to make it somewhat livable. Okay, we made this hammock kind of type of thing. And Chris is down there. And this is our uh, kind of sleeping situation. Not all that comfortable.